Now find a straight back chair, put both feet flat on the floor, close your eyes, and put your right hand by your side. Bring your attention to your right hand hanging by your side. Simply notice it. Be aware of it. And feel the blood flowing down into it, and it will tingle. Now just do that. Just be aware of your hand hanging by your side. There is no need for any effort. Again, simply notice your hand hanging by your side until you find yourself not noticing it through being caught up in a daydream of thought. And when that happens, simply bring your attention back to your hand again and again. If you do this, you will begin to feel the blood flowing down into your fingertips. You are now learning how to concentrate on your hand gently. Be very, very consciously aware of your hand. Mentally shift your attention from one finger to another. Bring your attention to your first finger. Notice it tingle a little bit. Now the second finger. Now shift your attention to the third. And fourth, coming back to the first again. Just be very, very aware of each finger in turn until it feels as though the blood were flowing into it. Tingle just a little bit. Now while you are being very, very aware of your hand, shifting your attention from one finger to another, you find you can do it. Become also aware of the middle of your forehead. Now, as though you are looking through the middle of your forehead, funnel your attention also down your right arm into your hand and bring your attention to each finger in turn while you're doing that. As though you were looking through the middle of your forehead, you can also see your right hand hanging by your side and you can almost see an outline of your hand in your mind's eye. And looking through the middle of your forehead, you'll see thoughts. And thoughts pull you in. Just stand back from those thoughts. Just stand back from the thought. Don't fight it. Just look through the middle of your forehead as if the thoughts were clouds. And funnel your attention down your right arm. Concentrate on each little finger in turn, shifting your attention from the first finger to the second finger to the third finger. And keep on looking through the middle of your forehead with your mind's eye. Stand back and see your thoughts as a television set with no picture on it. Just white noise, maybe color, little colored flashes of light. As though you're looking through the middle of your forehead, funnel your attention down your right arm and be aware of the first finger and the second finger and the third finger. And if a thought pulls you in, pull back. Pull back from the thought. Now, it may happen for a few moments that you're caught up in a daydream. Just observe the thought. Just notice that you're pulled into thought. Stand back and don't get frustrated and funnel the energy down your arm and focus on each finger in turn gently. You find you can do it. It will happen many times that your thought will, will pull your consciousness into it. But never mind, as many times as it happens... As many times as pull back, watch the thought as if you were looking at a cave, the wall of a cave. That's all. And the thoughts will disappear, dissolve, as you look down your arm and feel the blood flowing into each finger in turn, your first finger, your second finger, and so on and so forth. Keep doing this. Don't stop. Be very aware of this hand. Be very conscious of it. Feel the presence of it. Feel the blood flowing into it. Then out of this mild, warm, tingling feeling, let that hand become a vague outline in your mind's eye, the way I described it before. It is as though you can almost see or sense where your hand is without imagery. If your thoughts pull your awareness away from the present moment, bring your attention back to your hand and feel it again. Feel the awareness of it. Feel the presence of it. And then see the back of your hand drawing up towards the middle of your forehead. Now you can imagine the back of your hand coming up the middle of your forehead and just feel as though the hand is coming up. Just imagine it coming up now, just as an exercise of control over your own mind and feelings and body. And just imagine it, imagine it coming up to the middle of your forehead. Draw the hand towards the middle of your forehead as you look at it with your mind's eye. You can see your hand 
out of the corner of your mind's eye, coming up as if it was being lifted up by a warm cushion of air. Be very conscious of your own mind, as though you were sitting in a cave, looking at the wall of that cave, and then seeing that hand coming up towards the middle of your forehead. See the image of it now, and feel the awareness of it, and see it coming up towards the middle of your forehead. See the outline of your hand moving towards your head, and your head falling towards your hand. This is to help you relax. It is not that important if your concentration does not make your hand feel light. I only want to help you to keep your mind in the now present, to keep it from wandering into thought and dream stuff. If your thoughts pull your awareness away from the tingling of your hand in this present moment, simply feel the awareness of your hand again, and then see your hand drawing upward toward your head, and your head getting a little heavy towards your hand. Now keep doing it, and don't stop. That's all I want you to do. Again, so as to help keep your awareness in the moment, judge the distance between your hand and your forehead. See if you can estimate the distance your hand has to travel to touch your forehead. Don't hurry. Be patient. You have plenty of time. Just be conscious of the tingling of the hand. Feel the awareness of it. See the outline of it through your mind's eye, coming towards you, as though you are looking through the middle of your forehead. Drawing closer and closer. Keep doing it. You are not meant to look up and strain your eyes. Just as though you were looking through the middle of your forehead and seeing your hand coming up in your mind's eye. If your thoughts wander off, don't worry. Bring your mind back to the process, the awareness of now, the awareness of your hand rising to the middle of your forehead. Feel the warmth, the blood flowing down into it. Feel the presence of it. And then see the outline of your hand drawing towards the middle of your forehead. Again, as though you're looking out into space and you can see it coming towards you. Don't look upwards or strain your eyes. Simply have the awareness of the middle of your forehead in your mind's eye. Just observe as though you were looking through the middle of your forehead. The place where thoughts rise. Then see if you can locate where your hand is rising, up towards the middle of your forehead, energizing your arm through being very aware of it, it will become lighter and lighter and lighter. Don't hurry. It is really not important if your hand does not rise. The object of the exercise is to create a response to your inner self, to remain in the present, in the presence. If your arm becomes light and buoyant, let your hand go up by itself and travel towards your forehead. If your mind wanders off, bring your attention back to your hand. Feel the awareness of it again. Feel the tingling sensation, as though the blood were flowing down into your fingers. But there's something more than that happening. See the outline of your hand coming up towards the middle of your forehead, as though you were looking through your mind's eye. Remember, don't strain your eyes. Just be very, very aware of your hand, as though you could see it through the awareness of the middle of your forehead, so your hand and head will eventually feel as one. You find now you can dissolve unnecessary thoughts simply by becoming aware of the present moment. Be aware of your hand. Feel it coming up towards, so the back of your hand touches the forehead. Judge the distance. In your estimation, see if you can judge the distance between the back of your hand and the middle of your forehead. Draw the hand closer and closer to the head. Soon you will feel that the back of your hand is closer to your forehead than it really is. It may feel as though your hand is passing through your head at times, rather than to your head. But when it does move a little closer, it doesn't seem to get there, to touch your forehead. It seems as though your hand is closer than it really is. This is just an effect created by the way you're concentrating. But don't worry. Now still keep being aware of your hand. Be very, very conscious of it. Feel as though the blood were flowing into it. It will tingle. It may feel very warm or detached. But just keep being aware of your hand and remain aware of it through the middle of your forehead. When the back of your hand touches the middle of your forehead, you may drop your hand to your lap. When you've done with one hand, you might, if you wish, do it also with the other. Now, while you're listening to this, keep noticing the place in the middle of your forehead and your hand as if they were joined at one place. Each time you do this exercise, 
you're creating an increased ability to observe and therefore control your thoughts from within. Not because I'm telling you, but because what you're doing, this exercise, is going to make it happen from now on. Each time you do this exercise, you will create a greater awareness of the present, and the unpleasant events of the past become less and less important, dissolved in the light of reality. Not because you are told, but because this exercise will make it possible. You should not dwell morbidly on the past or worry about the future. Wait until the reason for your problem surfaces, and when it does, notice any resentment against being shown. Your exercise will help you keep your awareness in the present, always, from now onwards. Not because you are told to, because the exercise makes it possible. The exercise will clear your mind and cause you to realize the simple principles that will be revealed to you in the place in your mind where resentment and judgment always rose. Be aware of your silly ego needs, and then realize that no one can fulfill them. Be aware of the folly of looking outside to others for fulfillment. Look at your impatience. And in realizing your need for patience, patience will come. See what causes frustration and impatience. Surely it is some form of ambition for yourself or for someone. Realize the folly of that ambition. Now having more compassion because you're more patient, you need not let things upset you or frustrate you, not in the slightest degree especially those little unkind, unfair, dishonest things that people say and do to motivate you, to degrade you. You really ought not to be annoyed inwardly or outwardly. You must not suppress the anger. You have control over your emotional machinery just by being patient. Observe your impatience, which you used as a means of getting the ego drive and for judging others and having your way. See the need to overlook and be patient, make allowances, right in the moment, not because you are told to or have to, because you see it's right to do it. Don't be afraid to speak up patiently. Don't be surprised to see a lot of past suppressed resentment bubbling to the surface for release after that. You will soon realize it's your resentment that hurts you more than the unthinking cruelties of other people. Therefore, from now on, Watch out for the opportunity to overlook and be outspoken right there and then, right on the spot. Not two seconds later, but immediately, right in the moment when it happens. Don't let resentment rush over you. Put a space between the moment and that resentment as it rises, so that you will respond more to what you know is right in your heart and come to know what is right in your heart progressively and less and less to conditions and people. Learn to make allowances for everyone from now on. It's called forgiveness, no matter who it is, especially those who are close to you. Because you cannot control your faults, those you can see and those you cannot, it is unwise to be resentful towards the faults of others, especially your family. The ones to make allowances for first are the ones close to you. If you cannot do it for them, how can you expect to do it to strangers and live in the world? On the other hand, if you're patient with them, it will be easier to cope with the pressures of the world. True love does not expect anything from anyone. It is what you expect, ambition and ulterior motive, and do not receive that make you frustrated and resentful. It does not matter what others have or do. When you do something for anyone, do it because you see it's wise and good, not because for any reward or you feel obligated to do it. Watch the feeling of obligation in the solar plexus until it goes away, and then you can choose to do it or not. You must no longer have any imaginary conversations with people as to what you are going to say or do the next time you see them. Have faith. Be spontaneous. Never mind what you should have done or could have said. What has been cannot be changed, no matter how much you wish it. But you can change from now on through having patience, rather than resentment every moment of your life. If you have felt disturbed about some worry or mistake in the past, remember, the people you wronged, if they were good, would have forgiven you without your asking. And if they're not good, 
Just start making allowances from now on anyway, for it is written, Forgive us as we forgive. As you forgive others and be patient with them, you will stop judging yourself. The coward is a coward from the time he should have been brave until the next time. If he fails to be brave, he is a greater coward with more remorse than ever before. But if he chooses to be courageous, he will no longer be a coward. If the world should suddenly become perfect, the coward could never have the chance to redeem himself. So it is with you. You have allowed yourself to become judgmental and resentment over many trivial things in your life when you could have overlooked and made allowances. Therefore be glad when people are rude. It's an opportunity. For here is the opportunity to be patient and relive that past moment anew and give up judgment. If there was no danger, you could not possess courage. If there was no cruelty, hate, or temptation, how can you develop love and virtue? Cruel and unthinking people are giving you the opportunity to accomplish now what you failed to do before. The situation that once made you upset, guilty, and afraid will now become the things to give you happiness and well-being from now on. Therefore, whosoever shall try to anger you or upset you is actually giving you the opportunity to rise above your problems. They do not know this, but they are doing you a great service. And the harder people try to upset you, the calmer you must become, and the brighter you will shine. So remember to overlook on the spot, and be plain spoken with firmness, kindness, and patience from now on. Whosoever tries to annoy you intentionally or otherwise is trying to hurt and even control you with your own resentment. Simply observe them. Don't let resentment work against you. Respond only with patient endurance, and whatever thought or deed that comes forth out of that center of calmness, live it out. Take resentment out of everything so that you discern rather than judge. One is innocence, one is guilt. Let this run through your thoughts often. Have the awareness of it in your mind at all times. Keep this as a spiritual and moral goal. Let this idea of patient endurance be more important than any material goal in this world, for it is the means by which all else can be accomplished. Let the whole procedure of meditation give you a satisfaction and joy of doing it that will far exceed the pleasure of material things. It should be a joy to think about, to understand it, and to do it again and again, so the light will modify everything that passes through your mind from the world. You should make decisions according to it. First be patient and then make the decision. Everything you feel, do or say should conform to it. That is, be patient, overlook, endure cruelty on the spot, and be outspoken where wisdom dictates, with firmness, kindness and patience. Meditate because you can see it's the right thing to do, not because you have to. Do it because you yearn for understanding. Do it for the sake of finding and being committed to what is true and good. Do it for the pure love of seeing truth prevail, to be a better person, regardless of profit or loss, whether or not it makes you feel good. If you want to have a real goal to think about, let it be this one. If I could be unmoving in my patience and discern people as they are and not look through yesterday's eyes and see them without judging for what they've done in the past, I would be better off, for this is the truth. No other goal or first cause will give you satisfaction. Everything here points to the simple instruction to be patient, to endure, to overlook people's faults while actually looking at them without judging them, but seeing them anyway. Discern, don't judge. Add resentment to discernment, and what you've got is judgment. Judgment is guilt, discernment is innocence. Overlook on the spot. Be plain spoken with firmness, kindness, and patience. That's the secret, always. Part of this guidance is to help you to understand, to free you from emotionality so you can understand. The other part directs you to the center of your dignity. The meditation will bring you to this objective state, a little apart from time-space, so you see things about to happen before they wash over you. Do your exercise, and it will bring you to the inner life. Now, if you have something to say, say it. If you have something to do, 
do it. Don't be upset, say it. Don't be upset, do it. As long as you're calm and patient and not upset, you cannot possibly hurt others even though they may feel pain of truth. And you have the right to speak up. So don't worry about what people think and how they feel. You cannot please everyone anyway, so stop trying. You are responsible only for expressing the truth for each moment. If others become upset over your honesty, then they will have to see their own faults in the light of your patient nature. The first thing, then, is to stand firm and overlook, be patient, and stop overreacting. It's the patience that will keep you from overreacting. The spiritual will affect the physical. Be patient at all times under trial and tribulation. As long as you're not resentful and judgmental, you'll always be able to disagree without being disagreeable. If people are upset because of your honesty, they're not your friends anyway. You might as well know it now. Your real friends will come to respect and love you for your honesty and truthfulness. No need to plan your conversations ahead of time, such as, if he says this to me, I will say that to him. Keep the faith. Whatever it is, overlook it. Be plain spoken with firmness, kindness and patience. Wait for the moment and discover what to say, if anything. Make sure you overlook the things that should be overlooked and are plain spoken about the things that should be said. Don't close your eyes to evil. See it, but don't resent it. It will know that you are watching. Be sure you do not change your words to soften the outcome, keeping things to yourself that should be said or done. Otherwise they fester into resentment and guilt and morph into disease. Whatever personal problem you have, there is no need to analyze it any longer. You will see the solution in its own time. By digging around in your past and peering into the future will only confuse you more. Keep meditating so you become objective. Clear your mind slowly but surely in experiences of all the angers and resentments as opportunities present. And then as you come up to the light, you will surely perceive the cause of all your troubles in good time. You should not analyze these words. Instead, think about them, ponder them, until you understand your experiences. Just keep relating everything that's gone wrong with your life with hostility and resentment. It does not matter if people love you. You love them. It does not matter if people understand you. You understand them. And if they do not forgive you, forgive their unforgiveness. Don't say stupid idiot in your mind like that with a resentment when you see someone acting foolish. Let your attitude say, in a manner of speaking, here, let me help you. Observe their faults. But do not emotionally puff up or resent them for this. That's what it means to make allowances on the spot. Do not take personal offense at anything. Let criticism roll off you like water off a duck's back. Forbear to be excited by praise or offended by criticism, and don't be too eager to give praise or criticism. Now to sum up, you must meditate because you want to, not because you have to. Remember to overlook on the spot and be outspoken with firmness, kindness and patience from now on. Keeping this principle as the basis of everything you will do in your life, in the ever-present. Do not worry or dwell on the past or the future. Let past memories rise to the surface as they will, and face what you must in the light without resenting what you see or struggling to change it. Do your exercise, and the exercise will provide the energy to keep understanding alive in you, which basically is to be patient and to be plain-spoken. Each time you are patient and do not respond to torment and temptation, there will be a sense of victory or achievement quietly, and you will see things in a different light. And what you will come to understand will increase the meaning of the basic truth, which is patience, overlooking on the spot, enduring deprivation. Then each time you do this exercise, you will automatically, effortlessly carry down your new understanding into daily life, so that you will do it with increasing skill and confidence and character next time, which in turn will bring more understanding forever. Thus, the more you understand, the more you feel inclined to do what you understand, 
unless you will respond to outside conditions, temptation, and what people say and do. Nothing must be added to this concept while you do this exercise, nor anything taken from it. Merely be reminded to overlook on the spot, be outspoken with firmness, kindness, and patience. It is not intended that you should not think of anything else, of course. As you go through your daily chores and come into contact with people, no matter what you do, no matter what you think and feel, do everything in accord with this principle of overlooking on the spot and being outspoken with firmness, kindness, and patience. It's called bravery and courage and character. You should make allowances for people with all your thinking, with all your feeling, with all your understanding, because you see it's right, not because you're supposed to do it. Remember, there's no need to analyze this. Everything will come clear soon enough. Ponder on it, yes, within yourself. Don't worry. Cast out doubt in your mind as it approaches. Bring your mind back again and again to the objective state through this exercise of being in the here and now, in the ever-present, and observe doubt flee from you. Don't discuss this with anyone yet. There are no words. They won't understand. Just live it. Think it. Know it all secretly, and let it express itself outwardly, and people will wonder. Remember to do this exercise three times a day, as you've been instructed. The exercise is very important, along with the basic concept of patience. Now open your eyes and stretch. You carry this awareness with you all day long. Do the exercise first thing in the morning for 20 minutes or so. Find some time in the afternoon, may, maybe sitting in your car, and make sure you check yourself over before you go to sleep at night.